All right, so I'm in a fresh install of Expression Engine. Uh, we went ahead and enabled the Agile records for the default site on here. So notice it's fully built out. I did go ahead and save out the templates as files already. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install our transcribe module. Down here, transcribe. All right, so the first screen we're greeted with is a add a language screen. We're going to go ahead and add the English language because that's the default for the site. Uh, this setting right here is assign all current entries to uh, this language. We're going to hit yes because all the entries in this install are currently in English. All right, so transcribe is installed. As always, whenever you're building out a multilingual site, it's good to do it in a dev environment uh, and always have backups. We recommend Safe Harbor for that. It's uh, especially important when working with Transcribe because of a lot of the URL work uh, and routing stuff that we take into account. So if we go back here, you'll notice that the site is now operating still as intended, which is great. And we have a screen to add variables. All right, so from here, we're going to go ahead and start adding variables to Transcribe. Pull up our templates here. First place we want to go is to the navigation. Basically, we're looking for hard-coded items in the templates. we will notice we have three items in this template, home, about, and contact. So we're going to need to add two more rows here. We create our variables. And we're just going to call this nav home, nav about, and nav contact for our variable names. Go ahead and save these. So the next step we want to do is go ahead and put the transcribe tags in place to actually replace these between languages. Just going to insert these variables here. And we're going to go ahead and delete home and insert our variable name. And delete the about. Insert our variable name. And the same for contact. Save the template. So I went ahead and added all the variables. So from here, what we're going to do is go ahead and create a new language. We're going to go ahead and create the Spanish language. We're going to give it an abbreviation of ES. All right, so now that we went ahead and created our second translation, we're going to go ahead and populate the variables for the second translation. You'll notice we have the variable names pre-populated. And we're going to populate them with our given translations. For this example today, I grabbed the translations from Google. Uh, it's generally something you should not do when developing a multilingual site. So I went ahead and populated all the variables for the Spanish language. Now we're going to go ahead and work on the content. So we're going to filter by channel. Since we're working on the About section, we're actually going to click Information Pages. You'll notice that's the About channel. Click About the Label. What you'll notice is there's a transcribe tab added to the publish and edit area. If you click on this, you'll notice that you can assign entries to a given language, and you can also associate entries. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and click the Spanish, open it in a new tab, and we're going to populate the title, the Spanish version of the title, and click back to publish here. And what you'll notice is the rest of this is all lower ipsum. So copy that, and we'll just put in front of it. Go back and the extended also has content. So populate this as well. One last thing I want to call out is if we go back to our English entry, you don't actually need an associated entry for each language. Um, you can have different content layouts for each language of your site. They do not need to match up one for one across different languages. So we're going to go ahead and just hit submit on this entry. I went ahead and created the associated channel entries in the other languages we needed. And I'm now back in the transcribe control panel. We're going to go over to our templates button now at the top. What you'll notice is that we have created a way to rename or provide aliases for your template groups and template names. So for the English, it's simply just going to be English. Now that the templates have all been populated in English, we're going to go ahead and provide the Spanish translations as well. And for index, we're just going to do a ES index.
All right, so I went ahead and I finished all the template translations, uh, or aliases. So from here, we are ready to go and view our site. You'll notice that we're currently up on the English version of the site. I added this language switcher. The tags uh, are documented on EE Harbor, if you'd like to take a look at those. And you simply hit click Spanish, and you'll notice that the content has changed, and the images have captions which have changed as well. So from here, um, you'll also notice the URL is different. We have our translation for about. If you remember, we also did index, which pull up the same template, and you'll notice it does. So, you know, one of the most uh, requested features that we've had when we've told people we were developing this is uh, the ability to inject, essentially, a segment that specifies or identifies the current language that you're on. So uh, one of the features we added in Transcribe is if you go to Settings, uh, we have this Add Language Prefix uh, to Site URL. If you just simply click Yes here and hit Submit, what we'll do is go ahead and click the English version, and what you'll notice is we now have our EN abbreviation inserted into the URL. Likewise, if we click back to Spanish, you'll notice that it's now inserted in the Spanish URL. Um, that works site-wide, um, works for your paths and uh, your links and your comments. One of the last things I'd like to point out is that to create the Spanish version of this site, or multilingual versions of any site, you don't actually have to update your channel entries tags or other template logic to do so.